Today's video is by request from my friend Dino, and it's all about phasing dots on transformer windings. Uh, what they are, when they matter, and how to keep them straight when you're building circuits. Uh, when you're looking at a schematic of a circuit you might want to build, uh, oftentimes you will see phasing dots and sometimes you won't. Uh, this dot convention is really only used when the phase relationship between these mutually coupled inductors or transformer windings is important for the circuit operation. The dots really indicate essentially the polarity for the input and output signals. Uh, consider these two scenarios. If I have uh, the phasing dots kind of lined up here, you know, both on the top of uh, the schematic here, if we injected a signal that looks like this on this side, the output signal will follow it and will be in phase with it. If we reverse the connections on the secondary of this transformer, the output would obviously be inverted. So another way to think about these dots is that you know, whenever the voltage is going in a certain direction with respect to a dot on one side, the voltage will go in the same direction on the secondaries uh, uh, when you look at uh, you know, where the dots are. So this voltage is going up that way, this voltage is coming down that way towards the dot, you know, say at the very beginning of the waveforms here. Now as I mentioned, uh, sometimes the phase matters and sometimes it doesn't. Let me just show you an, an example or two of what I'm talking about. Let's take a look at a schematic that's in this uh, solid state design for the radio amateur. If we look at this uh, uh, portion of the schematic here for this uh, 6 meter DSP transmitter, uh, we can see a, a transformer here that's coupling the output of this crystal oscillator and there's no phasing dots. That means that it really doesn't matter if we swap the wires from one side to the other of this transformer, the circuit will work just fine. But if we look down here, we see this uh, trifiler wound uh, transformer and the phasing dots are there. Um, this transformer along with uh, these diodes and capacitors uh, and the uh, along in here form a, uh, a balanced modulator to basically take the RF carrier uh, from the oscillator and the audio signal from the microphone amplifier here and create a double sideband uh, you know, modulated signal. And in this particular case, uh, the polarity of the windings does matter for proper operation of that balance modulator. So if we were to build this, uh, how would we keep all these windings straight when uh, putting this uh, transformer together and, uh, and get all the phasing right? It's actually very easy. So we'll use the example of a trifiler wound uh, toroidal transformer, uh, just like I showed in the schematic earlier. And the real key is just being very consistent with the method of winding uh, the turns. Uh, for example, you know, choose to, you know, I'm always going to take my turns and go down through the center, come back up on the outside, back down through the center, back up on the outside. Be consistent in the direction in which you wind the turns, and also be consistent in the direction that you add additional turns going around. I'll go around the other way, for example. If you're consistent with every one of the windings that you add to the transformer, then it's real easy to determine the phasing. Essentially, all of the wires that are coming in off of one side, like all of these that are going across the top and down, they're all going to be in the same phase. So you could choose to put the dot on you know, each of those windings. Or you could choose to say, I'm going to put the dot on all of these. But basically, all the wire ends that are on the same side of the core are in phase. So very, very simple to take care of. Now, of course, if you twisted all these wires together before you wound them on the core, that, that whole issue of being consistent takes care of itself. Now, oftentimes, you might need to build a transformer that has a different number of turns uh, for some of the secondary windings. And in that case, you want to be careful that when you start adding your additional um, secondaries, that you, again, follow the same convention that you used for all of the other windings. And if you do that, again, the phasing really just takes care of itself. All right, so what does all this look like when we actually go and wind the transformer? Uh, here's an example that I wound just a little bit earlier. This is a trifiler wound, so I took three wires and twisted them all together in a row and then wound them together on this core. And if we look carefully, we can see these three wires go in you know, through the top here, come back around and keep going around and then finally exit on the other side of the core on the back. If we turn it around sideways, you might be able to see that a little bit better. Uh, three of the windings, or three of the uh, wires are going off this side, they're all coming out on this side. So we can just simply pick one side of this, one side of the other, and call that, you know, essentially our dotted end of the wires. So when we go to hook this up into the schematic, any of the wires that are essentially on one side 
are the ones that essentially have the dots on them, okay, and uh, would be hooked up in the schematic where the dots are. Uh, you know, that would look on a schematic, you know, maybe something like this. So let's actually go take a look at this transformer and see how the phasing dots wind up giving you the different phases. So what I'm going to do is put this transformer just in a breadboard here. I've got a signal generator that we're going to hook up to one of the windings, okay, and one end grounded, uh, the other end uh, just up here, and we'll look at that side on channel one on the scope, and then in the same phase, ground it on the same side and take the output from the dotted side into channel 2 and then on the third winding we'll ground the dotted side and take the output from the other side and we'll see that these two guys are essentially out of phase. Okay, to see what this looks like, we'll take our uh, trifiler transformer, stick it into the breadboard here and I've got my signal generator coming in, uh, you know, ground on this side and the signal on this side, so we'll call this side of the transformer the dotted side and we can see this uh, this probe here with the yellow band is going to channel 1 and that's what I see here. The second winding we can see I've connected up ground to the second winding on the non-dotted side and this probe here with the blue band is channel 2. So that should be in phase because we're connected up you know essentially uh, with the same dots uh, in the transformer and that's in phase with the input signal. Channel 3, if we take a look at that, the ground is connected on the dotted side and our uh, probe is connected on the non-dotted side, so we'll expect that phase to be 180 degrees out. And we turn on channel 3, we can see that. So we can see uh, by looking at the, the dots on the transformer uh, how this channel 3 is 180 degrees out of phase from channel 1 and 2 because we've reversed the direction of how we're connecting up with respect to the phasing dots of the three windings. So being consistent in your winding technique when you're putting the transformer together really just helps the phasing to take care of itself. You know, all the wires on the same side of the toroid are going to be of the same phase. The only other real trick is to keep track of which wire is which. And you can do that a number of ways. Uh, you can use different color wires like I've drawn here. Uh, you can put you know, different colored you know, paint or dots or nail polish on the wires and, and ohm them out once you've uh, you know, finished putting it together. You could put little kinks in the wire, one kink, two kinks, three kinks for the different turns and that kind of thing. And once you put all the windings on, it's a very simple matter to go through with an ohm meter to figure out which wire is connected at the other end. And so I hope you learned a little something about uh, what the dot convention is and uh, how it relates to the phase of the windings and when it matters and when it doesn't. And then certainly when you're putting your circuits together and winding your own transformers, how to keep the phasing straight. But thanks again for watching. Comments are always welcome. Again, give me a big thumbs up if you like it and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thanks again.